that there will be no more curse from taking us back to the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3 and 17, where he said, cursed. He cursed Adam, he cursed man, he cursed all of mankind for the sin that was committed. He said, because you listened to your wife and you did not obey me, and that you went ahead and you ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I curse everything because of you. Mm. So, now we come to Revelation 22 and 3, and he said, And no longer shall there be a cur any curse, and the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Hallelujah. So Father redeems us from the curse that he placed on man. And now we go forth in the gifts of healing. Last week we talked about the gifts of healing and that the leaves on the tree, that we are the fruit we are the branches, we're the fruit, we're the leaves. We have there are many gifts that is given to the body of Messiah, and all of those gifts are for the edifying of that body. Hallelujah. Amen? All right. And y'all know I like for y'all to talk back to me. Okay. Hallelujah. We're going to go on. We start in Revelation 22 and 4. And it reads, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be upon their foreheads. Hallelujah. Numbers. Somebody read for me Numbers 6 and 27. Now, Father is, is showing us in Revelation here in the 22nd chapter, there's going to be a, a couple of different themes here. But the themes all tie in, there's a couple of different topics or characteristics, I want to say, of the word. Um, but the, the theme is all one. The theme is to be set apart. And what are we set apart by? We're set apart his name, by his name because as he told Aaron back in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, you will place, Aaron and his sons will place my name on them and I will bless them. Who has number 6 and 27? If you have it, will you please go ahead and read. Thus they shall put my name on the children of Israel and myself shall bless them. Hallelujah. So he said, the children of Israel shall stand. Now let's go back and recap. Rabbi 2 explained to us over again what the house of Israel, what the word Israel means. The word Israel stands for, it, it, it is a, it, it's a, a conjunction. Or, um, am I saying that right, Rabbi? Compound word. Compound word. There you go. It's a compound word. You have Isra and El. Ephraim wants to help you out. Ephraim is going to help me out. I'm kidding. The word Israel. It's split here. The word El is God or Elohim. Okay? So it relates back Elohim. He being plural, meaning not of many gods, but as of greatness. Okay? That's why you have to, when you study in the, in the Hebrew language, it's totally different from the Greek mindset. That's why the word says that, the, that uh, Yahweh, that the sons of the Hebrews, the sons of Israel, were going to war against the sons of the Greek. That's what we're doing right now. We have to war constantly against the, the Greek mindset that has been placed within us. And so as we look at this, people will say, oh, see, that means Trinity. No, it does not. Elohim is still one. Why? Because he calls himself that. One at God. I am one. I am Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Akkad. 
I am one. So this plural ending could not mean more than one. But it means a talk speaks of the greatness. Gadol is the Hebrew word. The greatness. He is the Kohen Gadol. He is the high priest. The great high priest. So that's why that word Elohim is used even in the beginning. In the beginning, Elohim. There are sheep, Elohim. God, Yahweh, created the heavens and the earth. So that word El, that word right there, on the end is El. But this word right here, in Hebrew, the root word is always right, it's, I call it the guts of the word, right in the body of the word. Unlike with English, most times the root of the word is right at the beginning. But the root of Hebrew words is always right in the middle. And this is the word for Sarah. Now you wonder why the seed of Elohim had to come from Sarah. Could not come from Hagar. Because her name means to conquer. To conquer. To reign. And to rule. So her name actually means conquering, reigning, ruling princess. She is, was, that's what her name meant. So, Israel being a compound word means to conquer, rule, and reign with El, with Elohim, with God, with Yahweh. Okay? Oh, all right. Let's move on. So, his name was going to be put on the children of Israel, those who were conquering, reigning, and ruling with him. His name was going to be put on them, and the children, the sons of Aaron, were going to do that. So, now that we know his name being Yahweh, Elohim, Yahweh, El, Yahweh El Shaddai, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Yira, these people pronounce it Jira, but there's no J sound in the Hebrew language, so it would be a Y sound. Yira, which means all my provision and my provider. So we see the name of Yahweh being put on the foreheads. But let's deal with that word, forehead, today. Right here, the word forehead is Hebrews, Brown Drivers Briggs, 4696, and that word is Masak. Everybody say Masak. Masak. And that means brow or forehead. And it's from an unroot, unused root, meaning, to be clear, or concise, conspicuous. So, something's on your forehead, it's right there. Somebody walks up to you, you got a big zit on your forehead, they see, they go, their eyes go right to that big zit right on the forehead. Because it's right there, it's conspicuous. It's right in the front, it's clear as day. You can see it, clear as day. So, as we see that, Father Yahweh is saying to us that he's going to put his name clear, conspicuous, and concisely, right on front of our foreheads, for all to see. Then Revelation 14 and 1, it says, And I looked, and I saw a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. Conspicuous. Out front right there in front. Then we go to Revelation 22 and 5. And the night shall be no more, and they shall have not, no need of a lamp, or the light of the sun, because Yahweh Elohim shall give them light, and they shall reign forever. So this is still talking about who? Who is it still talking about? Israel. Because they're reigning, right? It says, and, he, and they shall reign with him forever 
and ever. So someone get, I, I need uh, four people to get scriptures. Matthew 5 and 14 is the first one. John 8 and 12. John 9 and 5. And John 11 and 9. And we're going to see who the light is, who's the lamp. You know, David said in, in the Proverbs, he said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. But that word that was actually used there was Torah. Your Torah, your Devarim, your Torah is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. Because the Torah is his teachings and instructions. It instructs us and teaches us how to walk. They're clearly and completely instructions. Who has Matthew 5 and 14? Matthew 5, 14. The next one was John 8 and 12. The next one was John 9 and 5. And the last one, John 11 and 9. Who has Matthew 5, 14? Okay, Lisa, who has John 8 and 12? Okay, Carolyn, who has John 9 and 5? Okay, Priscilla, and who has John 11 and 9? John 11 and 9, okay, Kenny. So let's read in that order, Lisa. You are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain. Amen. Who has John, who has the next one? I do. John 8 and 12. Therefore Yahweh spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possess the light of life. Okay, and that was actually Yeshua is um, quoted there. Therefore Yeshua spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. But those, he says, but those who walk in darkness, what happens to them? They possess what? Light. But they have, uh, he says, but no, by no means walk in darkness. You are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness. Okay, so those who walk in darkness are who? Not follow. There you go. Those who do not follow him, they do not have a light. Because they are not following him. Okay, who has John 9 and 5? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. John 11 and 9. The short answer, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. Hallelujah. So who is the light of the world? Come on, say it nice and loud. Yeshua is the light of the world. But in Matthew 5 and 4, who's the light of the world? Matthew 5 and 4, 14. I'm sorry. Israel. Except for you are the light. Yes. Israel. You are the light of the world. So he says. You are the light of the world in Matthew 5 and 14. And then he goes down and he said, I am the light of the world. So who is the light of the world? Who's the light of the world? We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Okay, remember last week. Y'all remember last week when we were talking. And I was teaching last week. And we were discussing the seed. Remember? Remember the fruit? The fruit and the seed. Everybody remember that? Okay, so remember we were talking about the trees, the trees that were on either side of the crystal lake, well, the crystal river, remember? Okay, great. I'm glad that you all remember that. Now, we've got the tree, and we've got the branches, and on the branches we have fruit. He's the scripture said in um, the first part of uh, uh, Revelation 22. He says that we are the fruit, that there are 12 fruit on, this, on these trees. And so we already decided that Yeshua is the tree. Amen? 
Hallelujah. But what, who do we say was the fruit? We are. We're the fruit. Israel is the fruit. Okay? Because the tree, Yeshua, is the, he's living. We found out that he was the living water, so we know that he's living. So he gives life to the fruit. And then the fruit, what happens to the fruit? The fruit then falls to the ground right. and makes what? Another tree. So, if Yeshua is the tree and he's also the light, then what does that make us? Little lights. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine that men will see your good works. And they will do what? They will glorify Father Yahweh who is in heaven. So as we see Yeshua being the light of the world, he also calls us. In Matthew he says, you are the light of the world. And this is quoted from Yeshua himself. He says that you are the light of the world. Why? Because I'm putting my light in you. Therefore, you are going to shine and you are going to be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth your fruit in its season. Your leaves will not wither and everything you touch will prosper. Because we are little lights. We are to be, we are to mimic and to be like him.